Um, we are talking about nutrition, and we're going to know that nutrition is the process by which organisms obtain food nutrients or food materials. Uh, basically, there are two types or modes of nutrition, and that is autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. What is heterotrophism or heterotrophic nutrition? Now, heterotrophic nutrition is whereby organisms do not manufacture their own food. So they depend on other organisms to obtain their food nutrients. Uh, organisms that fall under this category, we have all animals. All animals are heterotrophs. Then all fungi, all fungi are heterotrophs. And most monella, monella that is thing of monella, we have bacteria and all that. Most of them are heterotrophs. And most protoctists except eugrena and algae. So we also have what we call insectivorous plants like the pitcher venus flytrop. This is a plant that obtains food by capturing uh, insects, small insects using its leaves in order to get protein material. Basically, for purposes of getting nitrates, since these plants live in nitrate deficient environments. So that's all to do with heterotrophism. The second mode of nutrition uh, is called autotrophism. Now, you should quote me right here. Trophism means feeding or feeding level. Then auto is self. So these autotrophs are called self feeders and by definition this is whereby an organism makes its own organic food materials so it is practiced by all plants some bacteria some products such as eugrena and the algae autotrophism includes Two broad categories we have photosynthesis and chemosynthesis basically chemosynthesis this is whereby organisms synthesize their own organic food molecules using energy derived from oxidation of chemicals we shall see that in future as we go on with this live stream series then for photo, photosynthesis, photosynthesis, that's light synthesis, it, it is whereby organisms synthesize their own organic food molecules using sunlight energy or using light energy, no matter the source. Though on planet Earth, the major source of light is the sun. So, we are seeing that they are organisms which make food by themselves. They are our food factories on the planet Earth. And there are also these other organisms which cannot make food on their own and therefore depend on the others which make what? Their own food. So today we want to look closely into these first organisms which can make that which you don't have on planet earth organic food molecules so let us look at photosynthesis by definition photosynthesis is the process by which organisms manufacture complex food molecules from simpler inorganic molecules such as carbon dioxide and water using light energy. So basically, six molecules of carbon dioxide combined with six molecules 
of water in presence of sunlight trapped by the light trapping pigments like photosynthesis they are called the chloroplasts to make a molecule of a carbohydrate and six molecules of oxygen that's the equation summarizing the process of photosynthesis so why photosynthesis in other words what why is photosynthesis important to to life uh, basically in plants and algae photosynthesis releases oxygen into the environment which is used for aerobic respiration yes aerobic respiration uh, we see very well that for life to thrive and basically of now we are seeing that our air is polluted by a particle known as a virus so having fresh clean air is very very essential for life and this a function is being played by organisms which carry out photosynthesis by releasing that byproduct known as oxygen. Uh, the second functional importance of photosynthesis is that it reduces the amount of carbon dioxide in the environment whose accumulation would lead to what we call greenhouse effect and global warming. Yes, as they are fixing it to, to form for us food, they are doing us a service. You see, when we do carry out deforestation, we are leading the world into what we call global warming, because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that can increase the temperatures with time, and hence can lead to what we call climate change, that is leading to numerous, numerous changes, into the ecosystems of the world. Then the third and the last importance of photosynthesis is that it produces organic food molecules which can be oxidized to generate ATP energy. Now here ATP is adenosine triphosphate, the universal energy currency. Yeah, so these plants through the process of photosynthesis, these algae, the green algae, through the process of photosynthesis, synthesize for less organic food molecules. And I know very well that currently you know the significance of food. Yes, amidst this pandemic, people must still eat. So how do we get this food on the continent? How do we get this food on planet Earth? Uh, for my viewers, those of you who are very active students in USCE, that is Advanced Biology, you will count the number of reference books. I would wish those who are active students there, live, to go and visit the page in a book known as Functional Approach, page 151. There is a diagram that is showing us the leaf as a photosynthetic organ in plants. So it is a diagram showing the transverse section of a dicotyledonous leaf. So that diagram it tries to show us what really the leaf appears like when you cut it transversely. What is inside here? What is inside there? So when I have my dissecting blade, I can cut this and observe it under a microscope. So what I see is what is portrayed on that page. Now, we are going to be looking at the adaptations of a leaf to carry out this basic function of photosynthesis. 
Yes. Before we should look at the parts or the sections that make up a leaf.